so good morning everyone how are you all of you fine kind of enthusiasm that what will be taught hmm so any idea about what i'm going to teach today history okay yes so all of you know right i'm anish and i will be taking this subject basically as far as the upsc syllabus is concerned two broad divisions are there one is the indian history and the second is the world history now for your convenience what the upsc has done that they are not going to ask you world history in the pt part it was a or it is a part of the main syllabus but if we go through the previous year question paper not even a single question has been asked so that gives us a dilemma that whether to prepare or whether to study this world history or not but as far as the syllabus is concerned if it is mentioned in the syllabus then we have to talk because if you see the past two years trend of the upsc what we now call as upsc second avatar no 2013 the new syllabus changed but from 2022 onward post covid it is coming out with a new avatar new style of option framing new way of questions all these things are there so we can't expect it may happen that in this in the previous year they didn't give any question and in this year they will throw two or three questions of world history so the best part is to get prepared for all whatever the syllabus has been mentioned now when we come to the pt part that is the what does the upsc syllabus mention history of india and the indian national movement so during your school time you all would have studied the basically three divisions are there we have to study the ancient medieval and the modern portion and the modern portion will comprise your freedom struggle the entire part after this we have the post independent history also the post independent history you don't have to study 2000 up to up to 2014 or 16 rather when india got independence the kind of social political and the economic and the administrative challenges which had taken place which our constitution makers have faced the problem which our indian society has faced the problem on that you know very basic kind of questions are there you will find also this topic overlapping with your gs paper 2 also in the polity part in the public administration you read all these things so some kind of overlapping will be there but the difference is where when you write down the answer the nature of the question and the content of the answer that is different you have to write down that from an historical perspective and in gs2 that will be from the different perspective that is from the polity perspective okay now if we talk about you know what i have an experience what generally the candidate when they come for this dream of becoming an is officer in this journey of the civil services people know about many of the things but the one of the greatest lacuna they make is in terms of strategy that when you don't have a clear cut strategy you will fail to clear this examination even when you when you have studied it properly so the basic thing is first of all i will lay that how you have to organize yourself now coming to prelims part you know we have history of india okay we have ancient history we have medieval history and we have modern history now it is very much important that what to read and what not to read and what to read in what sense it should be read this is very much important now here i would like to show you all of you know by this time you know you will have some kind of experiences everyone says that ncert is very much important from class 6 going up to class 12th now why it is said that ncert is important i will show it to you this is pt 2023 paper okay 
this year recently on the 28th it was held this is the first question of history first question in which one of the following region was dhanya kataka which flourished as a prominent buddhist center under the mahasanghikas located so the central concern of the question is you have to give the location of the dhanya kataka andhra gandhar kaling and the magadh suppose that you have not read or you have think that are yaar upsc ka taiyari kar rahe to kya ye bachcho wala kitab padhenge क्लास ट्वेल्थ का है तीन साल नीचे जाके क्या पढ़े नाउ दिस इज क्लास ट्वेल्थ एनसीआरटी थीम्स इन इंडियन हिस्ट्री पार्ट वन चैप्टर नंबर टू ओके सीधा आंसर धन्या कटका व्हाट कुड बी द रीजन आंध्रा रीजन सो जस्ट योर अप्लाइड नॉलेज इन द क्वेश्चन विच फ्लरिस्ट एज अ प्रोमिनेंट बुद्धिस्ट सेंटर अंडर द महासंगिकाज is there any requirement of this question in order to get the correct answer just to play your mind this is the thing if you have read this ncert very much carefully less than 10 second is needed in order to find out the answer this is the relevance of ncert in upsc second question with reference to ancient india consider the following statement the concept of stoop is buddhist in origin stoop was generally a repository of relic stoop was a votive and commemorative structure in buddhist tradition now more than 90% of the student have attempted a wrong answer why because everyone thinks that because when we study buddhism the stoop is so much synonymous yes the stoop is so much synonymous with the buddhism that all, everyone is thinking that buddhism that the stoop is related to or has its origin in the buddhism now again ncert this is the themes in indian history class 12 chapter chapter number 4 okay this is the topic stupas okay the tradition of erecting stupas may have been pre buddhist and what was the first line it is clearly saying that it is pre buddhist before the origin of the buddhism the concept of stoop is buddhist in origin what is the correct answer this is the incorrect answer this option statement is incorrect so here only these two statement are correct and you will find these two statement also repository of relic as a votive and a, and a commemorative structure now 
since they contained relics second point statement came the entire stoop came to be venerated as an emblem of both buddha and the buddhism the third statement just applied knowledge framing is different word is different your knowledge and your vocabulary is tested in this so from now onward you people have understood with an evidence aise nahi bol raha with evidence you have to you know there is you have to keep this in mind that ncert is very much important for you be it regard with your concept or be it with regard to your facts okay if you are not doing this then you will not be able to clear this examination remember this student ka aadat kya hota hai extra material chahiye extra material chahiye class mein milega ya nahi milega aur isi karan se kya hota hai ki students you dream to become an is you dream to become a district collector and in the journey of that you become a notes and a pdf collector so don't do this okay ncert then your class notes and the most important thing the test whatever you learn whatever you read whatever you study always remember that if you are not testing yourself you will not, you know you will not have the ability to clear this examination aapka dimag khud jab bhi aap koi ek topic padhe ya koi chapter padhe na to aapka dimag chalna chahiye अच्छा यूपीएससी इस टॉपिक में से अच्छा ऐसे क्वेश्चन पूछ सकती है इसको इस तरीके से पूछा जा सकता है और ये आइडिया आपको कैसे मिलेगा अगर आप सिर्फ चीजों को पढ़ेंगे इफ यू आर ओनली गोइंग टू स्टडी द थिंग्स देन व्हाट इज द डिफरेंस बिटवीन यूपीएससी एंड गेटिंग अ डिग्री एंड यू आर नॉट हेयर टू गेट एनी काइंड ऑफ डिग्री बट रैदर टू क्लियर दिस एग्जामिनेशन एंड द ओनली थिंग विच इज विजिबल टू यू विथ रिगार्ड टू यूपीएससी इज इट्स टेस्ट पेपर और तो कुछ आपको मिलेगा नहीं सो इट इज ओनली द टेस्ट पेपर विच इज गोइंग टू हेल्प यू टू अंडरस्टैंड दैट हाउ यूपीएससी फ्रेम्स द क्वेश्चन व्हाट इज द डिमांड ऑफ दिस एग्जामिनेशन व्हाट एवर यू रीड व्हाट एवर यू स्टडी ऑलवेज गो थ्रू द प्रीवियस ईयर क्वेश्चन पेपर वेन यू हैव कंप्लीटेड अ पर्टिकुलर टॉपिक और अ पर्टिकुलर पोर्शन इफ यू हैव अ सेवन डेज वीक मंडे टू फ्राइडे यू शुड बी लर्निंग द थिंग्स यू रीड द थिंग्स you take the classes saturday sunday should be the thing whatever you have read within the 5 days you should revise it and should take a test and when you are taking the test don't think that in the first test you will be scoring more than 90% it may happen that you will score in minus marking also but that is the way you will jab minus aayega tab to jaake pata chalega na ki ha mera kahan galti hua tha और जब आप उस गलती को संभालेंगे जब उसको पता करेंगे अच्छा हाँ मैं इस चीज को मैंने पढ़ा था पर मैंने इसमें ऐसे ध्यान ही नहीं दिया कि इसको ऐसे भी पढ़ना चाहिए था तब जाके आपका प्रोग्रेस होगा तब जाके दिमाग खुलेगा मेरे दिमाग खुल जाने से क्योंकि मैं तो बैठूंगा नहीं एग्जाम में आपका स्टैंडर्ड वो होना चाहिए एट द एंड ऑफ द डे आपका वो स्टैंडर्ड और लेवल होना चाहिए कि आप यूपीएससी के क्वेश्चन पेपर के लेवल के हिसाब से सोच पाते हैं या नहीं सोच पाते हैं this should be your prime focus and in this regard ab is prime focus ko is cheez ko achieve karne ke liye kya karna hai see the greatest you know the challenge what you are going to face in this examination the greatest challenge mark my word the greatest challenge which you will face in this examination is you only aapke successful hone mein सबसे बड़ा अगर बाधा और अगर रुकावट कोई अगर बनेगा तो वो आप ही होंगे अपने लिए अगर आपने इस जर्नी में दया अपने लिए दया किसी भी प्रकार का सिंपथी या इम्पति अगर अपने लिए अगर आपने जनरेट अगर करना चालू कर दिया इट विल बी वेरी मच इम्पॉसिबल इवन टू कवर द सिलेबस द थिंग इज दैट यू हैव टू बी रूथलेस अपने आप के लिए आपको इस एक साल के लिए निर्दयी बनना पड़ेगा पढ़ने में समझने में आंसर राइटिंग करने में जो भी कुछ लाइफ का चीजें हैं उसे एक से डेढ़ साल तक के लिए जब तक कि एग्जाम क्लियर नहीं हो जाता है सबको बेबी है बाबू है जो भी है लीव देम असाइड उनको बोलो कि थोड़ा दिन एक साल तक रहो कहीं घूमने फिरने जो भी करना है वो सब मिलेगा अभी 
क्या कर रहे हो सबके पेरेंट्स के ही पैसा सबका आपके पास में आता है या तो हो सकता है कि कोई अगर नौकरी अगर कर रहा होगा तो वहाँ से आ रहा है तो क्यों अपने कमाई को खराब कर रहे हो या अपने पेरेंट्स के कमाई को इधर उधर उड़ा रहे हो कल को बन जाना आराम से सरकार आपके ऊपर खर्चा करेगी तब घूमना जहाँ फिर जाना होगा सो वन ईयर ऑफ रथलेसनेस अपने प्रति निर्दयी बन जाओ यू विल बी एबल टू क्लियर दिस एग्जामिनेशन एंड इट इज नॉट दैट इन वन ईयर people are not clear in this examination in the fifth and in the sixth attempt also people are clearing this examination then we have same amount or more than same person are there who are clearing within the first to second attempt 900 ka jo list aata hai na usme aap khoj khol ke dekhiye ho sakta hai ki jo topper rank ho wo kabhi first rank nahi leke aata hai kyunki इट नीड्स जो कई सालों से प्रिपेयर कर रहा है तो उसका एक्सपीरियंस ज़्यादा हो जाता है तो उसमें एक रिफाइनमेंट दिखेगा बट ऐसा नहीं है कि आप आई का रैंक नहीं ले सकते हैं ओके सो बी रथलेस फॉर दिस अपकमिंग वन ईयर तभी जाके आप कुछ अचीव कर पाएंगे सिलेबस काफ़ी लंबा है क्योंकि सिर्फ आपको एक सब्जेक्ट नहीं पढ़ना है हम अगर अपने स्कूल से अगर अपने जर्नी को अगर ट्रेस करें वॉट वी फाइंड क्लास सिक्स अप टू टेन we were studying all the subject but when we go towards the class 11 12 choices koi science mein gaya koi arts mein gaya koi commerce mein gaya phir jab aap graduation mein gaye to usse bhi aur thoda confined ho gaye but suddenly aapka dream aata hai ki hum upsc ka exam clear karenge aur isme aapko usi level pe sare subject ko padhna hai jis subject mein aapka kabhi interest bhi nahi tha main history ka hu to mujhe science mein interest nahi tha koi science ka hai to usse history boring lagta tha पब एड कभी जानते नहीं थे पॉलिटी कभी पढ़ा ही नहीं नाम के लिए सो ऑल दिस थिंग्स आर देयर सो लॉन्ग जर्नी इज देयर नाउ कमिंग टू योर हिस्ट्री पार्ट सो हाउ यू हैव टू स्टडी दिस हिस्ट्री सो एंशंट इंडिया योर मेडिवल इंडिया एंड योर मॉडर्न इंडिया ओके ऑल दो यू हैव this lecture plan is there topics has been mentioned and even the sources is also given but let me you know explain this that how we are going to move or what should be your plan see for ancient india first of all you should be starting with the ncert now for and there is one more thing art and culture also which combines all this portion ancient medieval and the modern okay now for ancient india you first of all you have to study class 6 ncert our past one and then you have to study class 12th ncert you don't for ancient india you don't have to study 7 8 9 10 or 11 class 6th directly class 12th these are the two basic ncerts are there okay Similarly, for medieval India, you will have to study class seventh, and then class twelfth. Again, class twelfth. Here it is part one. Here it is part two. It basically the title is themes in Indian history part one, themes in Indian history part two, and medieval India, you have to study class eighth. and then you again you have to study class 12th part 3 your basic thing after this you have art and culture so you have three most important book for your art and culture portion for your prelims also and for your mains first is the fine arts of class 11th similarly the fine arts of class 12th this two book is there apart from this there is one more text and it is not available in print in the market you will find this text only in the ncert website so there is class 11th in the last you when you were searching the book in the last you will find knowledge tradition and practices in india
knowledge tradition and practices in India. This is the most relevant book for your mains part, for your mains examination, GS1 mains. So this three book is needed, okay, for the art and the culture part, okay. Beyond this, now what is needed? It should be supplemented by your class notes. Whatever I will be teaching in the class, the way I will be explaining in the class, you should do this. Iske alawa, kuch bhi market se lene ka jarurat nahi. Jo bhi itne saare reading material, ye, wo, phalana, dhikana, jo bhi pada huwe, kuch bhi lene ka jarurat nahi. Agar in saare chijo ko karne ke baad mein, agar kuch karna hai, to wo hai test. Test do. Jitna jyada se jyada test do ge, utna jyada se jyada apka ability develop karega. To pad ho, रिवाइज करो और इवैल्यूएट करो अपने आप को फिर अपने लिमिटेशंस को देखो फिर से इवैल्यूएट करो और अपने लेवल को बढ़ाओ पीटी के लिए भी और मेंस के लिए भी ठीक है सो दिस इज अ थिंग एनी एनी डाउट एनीथिंग एल्स एंड इफ एट एनी पॉइंट ऑफ टाइम आई वुड फील नो दैट इफ दिस सोर्सेस आर इनएडिक्वेट then I will be providing some kind of notes to you. Okay? No need to worry about it, but only when needed. I don't want you to be a collector of notes. Okay? Now, Amit, please mute yourself. Now, does anyone have any kind of question that how I have to prepare or how I have to go? Anybody? Everything is clear? What to study, what to prepare? Okay. Sir, what if old NCRT have been read? You can read NCRT once you have completed at least these things. And when you are in the stage of revision, then you can utilize that old NCRT and even the Tamil Nadu state book also at that stage but initially you should be focusing upon first of all reading this modern ncrts taking making a notes of it understanding all the theories and the concept behind them okay and if you are not understanding i am always there to help you out yes i will provide dictation of notes in the class yes See, that is the advanced level. Initially, when you don't know that what is what was the status of women, how did they progress, how you will be able to make a comparative part. You have to at least study that what are our the Artha Sastra, the Manu Smriti, the Dharma Sastra, what does they say about? What was the status and the position of women in the Vedic period? When you have fact and data related to this, then you will present it in your answer. Then you will look that what are the changes which the constitution of India gives and what are the facilities which are available to women in the present time. Then you will be able to draw a conclusion. So we have to move systematically. At least first of all we will learn. By the end of the classes everything will be clear. Okay. And that is why I am saying that why do you have to practice? Everything cannot be taught in the class. But when you, you know, go through the questions, your horizon develops. And that gives you an ability to think. Okay, you can read it like this, you can think like this. That is the thing what we have to do. Yes, everything. Everything has to be done. Everything, everything. For art and culture, everything will go. Okay, so why do we study history? The question is, civil servant are you? आपको आज के प्रॉब्लम को समझना है डिस्ट्रिक्ट में आ जाए तो पुरातत्व के प्रॉब्लम को जाके क्या किस लिए व्हाई देर इज अ नीड टू स्टडी हिस्ट्री पॉलिटी पढ़ना चाहिए था कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन होना चाहिए था पवैड होना चाहिए था दीज आर द थिंग्स व्हिच इज गोइंग टू हेल्प यू व्हाई देर इज अ नीड टू स्टडी दिस सब्जेक्ट क्या जरूरत है प्रिजर्व द कल्चर के लिए तो हम कई सारे इंस्टीट्यूशंस बना सकते हैं वी हैव यूनिवर्सिटीज वी हैव आर्कियोलॉजिकल सर्वे ऑफ इंडिया वी हैव म्यूजियम्स टू प्रिजर्व ऑल दोज थिंग्स बट वाई सिविल सर्वेंट आर मेड टू स्टडी दैट 
Yes, somewhere around you have an idea, but you are not able to elaborate it. Basically, the thing is that what we today are has its origin in the past. For example, if you are a district magistrate and there is a problem in your district with respect to caste, two caste group have, you know, clashed with each other. So when you don't have the knowledge, when you don't have the ability that what is caste, what is jati, at least you will not be able to devise a solution out of it. So basically we study the past in order to understand the present so that we can make our future better. Because you learn the mistakes which has happened in the past and you try to rectify it. Okay. So in that sense, history is basically what? Write it down. All of you should be, you know, taking down the notes. Always in the class when I am saying it, you should make a notes. And when you are having any kind of doubt while the lecture is going on, write down your, you know, the thing is that I don't want anyone to interrupt in between. But that doesn't mean I will not be solving your question. Rather write it down and when as the class gets over, I will be solving all the doubts related to that. Okay. For offline, no need to study the spectrum. The NCRTs and my class notes will be adequate enough for your modern history part. Okay. But yes, as the market, if you want to go by market tradition, you have a liberty, you can go by spectrum. But I don't, you know, prefer this, all this Raddi and this, all these guides and kunjis, which is available in the market. Okay. So write down what is history first of all. So it is an English yeah. word. It is so an English. Uh, show the previous slide of uh, sources. Okay. Uh, is it clear? Yes, sir. Just. Uh, I yes, it will be there. It will be there. You can note down. You will have that soft ask for the soft copy of that lecture plan also. In that I have mentioned the topics and the sources also. Okay. You ask from our IT team, they will give you, they will deliver you the PDF file of that. Okay. Okay, sir. Yes. So it is an English word which is derived from the Greek word, derived from the Greek word, historia. Historia, which means inquiry or investigation, which means inquiry or investigation. So always we have to, whatever we study, whatever we learn in history, we have to always ask why, why, why and how, why and how. Okay. So now during basically the origin, what we, the way we study history today has its origin in the colonial period. The kind of history which we used to study in our ancient and in the medieval period was very much different. But the way in which we are learning in our present day education system, it has its origin in the colonial time period. But there were certain challenges. Now what were those challenges? Basically is that related to periodization. or rather say the classification. How the classification of Indian history was done, that was the, one of the foremost challenge which the colonial rule has presented us. All of you would be knowing about it, that ancient India they referred to as Hindu India. Medieval India they referred to as Muslim India. And the modern India they referred to as the British period or the modern period. Now there is an issue. Two period you have categorized on the basis of religion. Then why this period was not categorized on the basis of religion? This is one of the question which comes to our mind. If religion is the criteria for periodization, then in the ancient period we had Buddhism also. We had Jainism also. 
why are you not applying that epithets so basically why this kind of thing was done in order to justify the british rule in india they wanted to when you will come towards modern india you will know in much more detail basically in order to justify their rule they said that the ancient india was a hindu india and it was a period of glorious rule india was flourishing at that point of time very high at the height of civilization in the muslim period it degraded in the muslim period the indian history degraded and now we have arrived to balance all this thing and we will take you towards the civilization path so why they were using this basically in order to rule so that they can divide the society and their rule can perpetuate this was the one of the most thing but this kind of classification has many limitations and biases are there so we don't in the modern history in the modern time period we don't follow this kind of classification rather the classification now what we go is much more rational much more logical and neutral also and what is this classification basically the ancient india then we have the medieval india sorry we have the early medieval india then we have the medieval india and then modern india medieval in ancient india is from earliest time to 6th century bc or ce rather you can write it is from 6th century ce to 12th ce this is from 12th to 18th ce and it is from 18th ce to modern period this is the broad classification and this is the broad way in which we in the present time study the modern indian history and this is the time period classification okay now we will be starting with this ancient part okay now if you want to know about the past how do you know about it what are the ways any idea tell me what are the ways in which you one can know about the past inscription that is one of the thing okay anything else archaeological remains okay so what you are giving me is the specialized term but i want a generalized term now what is this specialized in the generalized term let me explain you suppose kariye ki ek table pe aam sev khela amrut sab kuch rakha hua hai maine aapse kaha ki aap mujhe ek phal dijiye तो आप दीजिए मुझे कोई एक फल क्या देंगे आप गिव मी एनी फ्रूट ऑफ योर चॉइस गिव मी अरे यार इतने तो आप लोग हो ना कि एक तो फल दे सकते हो आप लोग को दिया हुआ है आम चलो आम ले लेते हैं गर्मी का सीजन है ठीक है आम ले लेते हैं मैंने आपसे मांगा था फ्रूट आपने मुझे क्या दिया मैंगो तो फ्रूट इज द जनरलाइज टर्म फ्रूट को जब हम फर्दर क्लासीफाई करेंगे तो उसमें आम सेव केला आएगा ना तो जब आप कह रहे हैं इंस्क्रिप्शन कह रहे हैं आर्कियोलॉजिकल सोर्सेस कह रहे हैं तो ये तो उसके पार्ट हुए तो जनरलाइज टर्म क्या होगा सोर्सेस होगा ना सोर्सेस ऑफ इंडियन हिस्ट्री 
और द सोर्सेस ऑफ एंशियंट हिस्ट्री नाउ जब हम सोर्सेस को डिवाइड करेंगे तो फिर फर्दर आएगा हमारे पास डिवीजन एंड फ्रॉम हेयर आवर जर्नी ऑफ द यूपीएससी स्टार्ट ओके सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल आवर फर्स्ट टॉपिक इज द सोर्सेस ऑफ एंशियंट हिस्ट्री ठीक है नाउ फॉर दिस यू कैन एटलीस्ट हैव अ वन काइंड ऑफ रफ चार्ट कि जब भी आपके पास में ये टॉपिक आए तो आप कैसे इसे समझे एक माइंड मैप चार्ट होना चाहिए सो द फर्स्ट इज द लिटरेरी सोर्सेस सेकेंड इज द आर्कियोलॉजिकल सोर्सेस and the third will be your accounts of foreign travelers these are the sources which help us to study the history of ancient india okay now when we go towards the literary sources now literary sources can be divided into many portions so first of all we have the sanskrit sources okay here we will have the vedas epics puranas dharma shastra okay niti shastra then we will have buddhist sources buddhist literature then we will have jain literature and then some other miscellaneous literatures which are beyond classification with respect to any religion or any language okay they transcend this boundary we also have the sangam literature at least for the past 2 years this is one of the favorite topic of the upsc in the pt part okay now archaeological sources so we have to study this in not in that much detail in which the anthropologist studies but rather the basic terms and the concept and concept then we will have epigraphy and then we will have the numismatics so what you have said the study of inscription is basically epigraphy okay and then the third part is the account of foreign travelers so you will find for example megasthenes of indica account fa hen zhuang zheng all these chinese traveler iranian traveler arab travelers were there who had left some kind of account and details which provide us the information about the prevailing political social and the economic condition of that time period okay so we will be starting with the literary sources and in that literary sources our first topic will be the vedic literature we are going to study the vedic literature any idea about vedic literature what is vedic literature any idea pata to hoga hi बताना नहीं चाहते हो क्या क्यों डर लग रहा है 
नहीं वेदिक लिटरेचर के बारे में मैं पूछ रहा हूं यस द फोर वेदास उसके अलावा कुछ वेदिक लिटरेचर में क्या आएगा यस दैट इज अ क्लासिफिकेशन देर फर्दर क्लासिफिकेशन इट इज सो बेसिकली वेन वी से वेदिक लिटरेचर वी हैव टू थिंग्स द वेदास एंड द वेदांगास limbs of vedas okay this is the two thing is there now write down the definition of this veda or what is meant by this vedic literature how do you have to define and for example if you get any kind of question related to this vedic literature for your upsc gs1 mains then you need to have some kind of answer for that okay write down the word veda the word veda means knowledge the word veda means knowledge and is and is derived from the derived from the sanskrit word with with apostrophe with which means to know with means to know okay they are they are the oldest surviving text they are the oldest surviving text in the indian subcontinent they are the oldest surviving text in the indian subcontinent and is written and is written in pre classical sanskrit and is written in pre classical sanskrit any idea about this pre classical sanskrit anyone having any idea what is this pre classical sanskrit hmm? yes see basically when we talk about the sanskrit which is what we read in the present time and the sanskrit which is there in the vedas they are different from each other the sanskrit what we read in the present time has its origin in the panini's ashtadhyay we have two sanskrit grammarians panini's ashtadhyay and patanjali's mahabhasya patanjali panini is the earliest one and in his book he has codified all the rules and regulation related to sanskrit grammar or this language how it should be written what shall be the way of writing down the things jaise hum modern time mein padhte hain na ki kahan pe a lagega kahan pe da lagega kahan pe verb subject ka agreement hota hai in that similar way how sanskrit is written the rules related to that for the classical sanskrit was codified first by panini's ashtadhyay okay so from there onwards and coming up to now all these things are part of the classical sanskrit and the vedas basically we cannot try to generalize that what are the rules and the regulations although there are rules and regulations are there but you don't have to study in that much detail so the term which is used for their rules and regulation is the pre classical so they are written in the pre classical sanskrit so classical sanskrit and pre classical sanskrit understand the difference pre classical sanskrit is the example of the vedas classical sanskrit it starts from the panini's ashtadhyay and goes on towards that present time okay remember this it does not refer it does not refer to one single to one single literary work to one single literary work 
but indicates but indicates a corpus of literature a corpus of literature veda are categorized vedas are categorized as shruti shruti okay which means what is heard what is what is heard and is and is opposed to opposed to smriti smriti composed by sages composed by sages at a later stage according to indian tradition according to indian tradition or traditional thoughts veda is regarded veda is regarded as revealed scripture revealed scripture self evident and self authoritative so basically when you read this vedic literature and all this sanskrit literature they have been generally classified into two parts shruti and the smriti the vedas are part of the shruti epics dharma shastra puranas upanishad all these are part of the what smriti smriti literature now why are they classifying it as shruti what is heard the aim as i have written revealed scripture self evident and self authoritative see the agenda was to glorify this literature all of you know that it is regarded in the present time vedas are regarded as the epitome literature of the hinduism okay so in order to give them a divine position a divine authority these kind of mechanisms these kind of ways were divided or they were you know given so that nobody questions it you accept it without any kind of questioning so when you categorize it as shruti you say that it is heard so by the god to the earliest man this knowledge was revealed the vedas are something which contains the knowledge about the universe which the god has given to some of the chosen person and it is not available for everyone so in this way when we will come towards the vedic period time period this will get more clear but now for this time remember this part only okay now we will study the classification of vedic literature classification of vedic literature this was the definition of vedic literature or the definition of the vedas okay categorization of shruti basically will mean giving them a divine status to all these whatever the compositions were there now we are coming about the classification so classification i have told vedas and the vedang that is the ling, uh, limbs of the veda now veda will be divided into four part so first of all we have rigveda then we will have samveda yajurved and then atharva ved four basic classification 
okay now each of these vedas each of these vedas has four more classification every veda okay will have this classification the first one is samhita then we have brahmanas we have aranyakas and then we have upanishad these are the four broad classification of each of the veda samhitas brahmanas aranyak and the upanishad remember it map dimag mein map ban jana chahiye vedas aaye to vedas ke pehle do part honge vedas and the vedan फिर वेद वेद को अब हम पढ़ रहे हैं तो वेद के चार पाठ ऋग्वेद सामवेद यजुर्वेद अथर्वेद अब चारों वेद के अपने चार पाठ होते हैं क्या होते हैं वो चार पाठ संहिता ब्राह्मणाज अरण्यक एंड द उपनिषद नाउ संहिता वी विल स्टडी दीज थिंग्स ओके और व्हेन वी स्टडी दिस थी संहिता यू विल ऑटोमेटिकली नो दैट वॉट ईच वेदा स्टैंड फॉर संहिता से ही आपको पता चल जाएगा कि वॉट इज द यू नो कॉम्पोजिशन और वॉट इज द वॉट डज द रिग वेद कंटेंस वॉट डज द साम वेद कंटेंस अथर वेद एंड द यजुर्वेद ओके सो संहिता बेसिकली मीन्स कलेक्शन इट बेसिकली मीन्स कलेक्शन ओके राइट डाउन अबाउट रिग वेद संहिता रिग वेद संहिता रिग वेद संहिता इट इज अ कलेक्शन ऑफ इट इज अ कलेक्शन ऑफ वन थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी एट हिम्स कलेक्शन ऑफ वन थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी एट हिम्स विच आर रेफर टू एज सुक्ताज और सुक्त सुक्त अरेंज इन टेन बुक्स अरेंज इन टेन बुक्स द टर्म फॉर दैट बुक इज बेसिकली द मंडलाज टेन मंडलाज इट कंटेन्स द वर्ल्ड्स इट कंटेन्स the world's oldest surviving poetry world's oldest surviving poetry the whole of the whole of rig ved samhita the whole of rig ved samhita is in is in the form of verses is in the form of verses which is known as which is known as rik which is known as rik okay rik is the name rik is the name given to given to those mantras those mantras which are meant which are meant for the praise of deities for the praise of deities so rigveda also talks or has hymns related to deities indra agni vayu all these things are there okay now coming to samved samhita
it consists of it consists of 1810 1810 verses mostly borrowed from the rig ved mostly borrowed from the rig ved and arranged and arranged according to the needs of according to the needs of musical notation or the pronunciation of the mantras Yajurved Samhita, Yajurved Samhita, it deals, it deals with the performance of rituals, performance of rituals mentioned in Rig Veda. mentioned in the Rig Ved and also has and also have philosophical doctrines philosophical doctrines the last Ved that is the Athar Ved Samhita it is the newest when we talk about the age or the composition of the Vedas Rig Ved is the oldest and the Athar Ved is the newest. So it is also referred to as the latest Veda, which contains, which contains hymns, spells, charms, reflecting, reflecting the aspects of, reflecting the aspects of popular belief and practices popular belief and practices so basically rig ved sam ved yajur ved and athar ved rig ved is what is having how whatever that you know for the praise of deities the hymns are there the mantras are there अब इस मंत्र का उच्चारण कैसे होगा? Yes. Sir, can you please repeat the definition of Atharva Veda? Okay, it is the latest Veda. It is the latest Veda, which contains, which contains hymns, hymns, spells, and charms, and charms, reflecting. Reflecting the aspects of the aspects of popular beliefs and practices. Popular beliefs and practices. Okay. Thank you, sir. So in the Rig Ved, we have all those mantras which is required for the praise of a de deity. Okay. Sam Ved, suppose. आप कोई यज्ञ कर रहे हैं या कोई अनुष्ठान अगर कर रहे हैं, so what should be the tone of that? अब जैसे स्वाहा है, तो स्वाहा को किस टोन में बोलना है? तो स्वाहा, so this tone, whatever the tone will be of the mantras, whatever you say, आज के डेट में जब शादी होता है या जब कोई भी ऐसा ओकेजन होता है, तो उसमें एक पर्टिकुलर टोन होता है, देखना पंडित जी हमेशा एक पर्टिकुलर टोन में बो so that tone is derived or what is the component of the Sam Ved. Yajur Ved, tone ke saath mein humne swaha to bola, pas swaha ke time pe ghi dalna hai, pani dalna hai, ya koi bhi cheez dalna hai, us yagya anushthan ke andar mein jo havan kund jo banaya gaya hai, us mein kuch dalna hai. So that is being discussed in the Yajur Ved. Thik hai? 
और इसके अलावा जो भी पार्ट है दैट इज द कॉम्पोनेंट ऑफ द अथर्वेद सो अथर्वेद इसमें थोड़ा सा अलग है ऋग्वेद सामवेद यजुर्वेद पूरे यज्ञ अनुष्ठान को कंप्लीट करने में मदद करते हैं हमें ठीक है एवरीथिंग क्लियर नाउ सो वी हैव स्टडीड अबाउट द समिताज ऑफ ईच वेदा नाउ वी विल बी स्टडिंग द ब्राह्मणास एंड व्हेन आई एम टेलिंग दिस ब्राह्मणास डोंट गेट कंफ्यूज इट एज अ सोशल क्लास ऑफ द प्रेजेंट टाइम referring to the caste of the brahmanas or the people of the brahmanas rather it is a name of a text a collection of text okay so brahmanas brahmanas are prose explanation brahmanas are prose explanation prose explanation of the samhita portion of the samhita portion and and give details and explanation give details and explanation of of sacrificial rituals sacrificial rituals and their outcome and their outcome ओके, सो इट विल बी सेम फॉर ऑल ऋग्वेद सामवेद यजुर्वेद अथर्वेद एवरीथिंग इज सेम थर्ड पार्ट वी आर कमिंग टू अरण्यक अरण्यक ऑल्सो रेफर टू एज ऑल्सो रेफर टू एज फॉरेस्ट बुक ऑल्सो रेफर टू एज फॉरेस्ट बुक they interpret they interpret sacrificial rituals sacrificial rituals in a in a symbolic and philosophical way in a symbolic and philosophical way okay the major the major content of the major content of aranyak r aranyak r brahma vidya brahma vidya what we call as theosophy upasana upasana that is meditation and pran vidya pran vidya knowledge of breath okay knowledge of breath and the fourth part that is the upanishads upanishads we are coming about they are the concluding part of the veda they are the concluding part of the veda basically basically ved can be understood ved can be understood in two parts in two parts कर्म कांड कर्म कांड इन ब्रैकेट यू कैन राइट डाउन डीलिंग विथ एक्शन और रिचुअल्स एंड द सेकेंड इज द ज्ञान कांड ज्ञान कांड नॉलेज पोर्शन so all the rigvedas samhitas 
the aranyak and the brahmanas they are the part of the first part that is the karm kand they are dealing with the actions and the rituals वेदास के हमने चार पाठ पढ़े हर वेदा के अपने चार पाठ हैं संहिता ब्राह्मणाज आरण्यक एंड देन उपनिषद्स चार पाठ हैं ये जो तीन पाठ है दे आर द पार्ट ऑफ कर्म कांड दे डील विद द एक्शन एंड द रिचुअल्स और जो उपनिषद्स है दे आर द ज्ञान कांड that is the knowledge portion of the vedas and that is why they are referred to as the concluding part of the vedas this is the reason why sometimes the upanishads are also referred to as the vedant end of the vedas kyunki jo in hazaro saalon ka jo journey tha aur isse jo knowledge derive hua ise finally aake compile or consolidate kiya gaya upanishads mein that is why we refer to as upanishad as the concluding part of the vedas or also refer to as the vedant okay you write down they represent they represent the central aim of the vedas the central aim of the vedas and and contain the highest contain the highest and ultimate goal ultimate goal of the veda ultimate goal of the veda as they as they deal with deal with moksha और सेल्वेशन मोक्ष समटाइम रेफर टू एज सेल्वेशन और समटाइम टू एज द सुप्रीम ब्लिस ऑल्सो सुप्रीम ब्लिस ओके द वर्ड उपनिषद the word upanishad has been derived has been derived from from the root word root word sad sad इसको इंग्लिश वाला सैड नहीं पढ़ना है ठीक है साद विच मीन्स टू सिट टू सिट एंड इन इट एंड इन इट आर एडेड आर एडेड टू प्रीफिक्स टू प्रीफिक्स उपा दिस इज द फर्स्ट प्रीफिक्स एंड द सेकेंड इज नी उपा नी नाउ उपा मीन्स वॉट नियरनेस उपा मीन्स नियरनेस and ni means totality totality so when we combine all these things so what we get it means within quotes sitting near devotedly sitting near devotedly or with complete surrender okay it denotes it denotes 
a secret teaching a secret teaching or doctrine or doctrine given by a teacher given by a teacher to his to his pupil or to his student it contains it contains a great variety of a great variety of philosophical ideas philosophical ideas about sacrifices sacrifices the body the body and the universe and the universe and in that and in that they highlight they highlight the most important concept of the most important concept of atma and brahm so atma will be written as atman in that way in english we write like this atman but we pronounce only atma remember and brahm and the second one is brahm again a will come we say only brahm but we write a ye angrezon ka diya hua gift hai theek hai in total in total we have we have 108 upanishads 108 upanishads amongst which or among which 13 are 13 are principal principal upanishads or mahavedas principal upanishads or mahavedas theek hai so in this way we have completed the entire first part classification of the vedic literature of the vedas theek hai koi doubt kuch aisa cheez jo ki nahi samajh mein aa raha hai क्लासिफिकेशन ऑफ वेदास दो पार्ट में हमने बांटा वेद वेदांग हम अभी सबसे पहले सबसे पहले हमने कवर किया वेद को वेद के चार पार्ट ऋग्वेद सामवेद यजुर्वेद अथर्वेद हर वेद के अपने चार पार्ट व्हाट आर देव्स समिता ब्राह्मणास अरण्यक उपनिषद्स ठीक है उसके बारे में हमने डिटेल में डेफिनेशन में पढ़ा सबका डेफिनेशन हमने देख लिया उपनिषद का भी डिटेल हमने देख लिया नाउ वन मोर थिंग इज देयर ईच ऑफ द वेदास हैज सम ब्रांचेस ऑल्सो वेद के कुछ अपने हर एक स्कूल ऋग्वेद सामवेद यजुर्वेद और अथर्वेद के अपने कुछ स्कूल्स हैं वॉट आर दीज स्कूल बेसिकली ओवर टाइम सर्टेन थॉट्स डेवलप कि ऋग्वेद को किस तरह से इंटरप्रेट करना चाहिए किस तरह से पढ़ना चाहिए क्योंकि एक ऑल ऑफ यू नो दैट व्हेन देयर इज एन आइडिया फॉर एग्जांपल आप प्रेजेंट टाइम में यू कैन अंडरस्टैंड इट वी हैव अ मैरिज मैरिज थिंग इज देयर इन आवर सोसाइटी मैरिज इज टेक प्लेस नाउ सेम मैरिज इफ यू गो टू यूपी इफ यू गो टू बिहार इफ यू गो टू राजस्थान और इन एनी ऑफ द स्टेट ऑल द हिंदूज do the marriage in that same tradition only but there are variations in the style the way marriages are conducted amongst the hindus in all of the state that will be different and why this differences occur due to interpretation the priest how they interpret it what shall be the rituals what shall be the functions so in that way over a period of time these vedas has also different school and the branches 
नाउ देर इज नो नीड टू यू नो वेरी मच वरीड अबाउट कि अब अब और कितना पढ़ें द ओनली द थिंग इज दैट वेरी फ्यू ऑफ ईच ऑफ द वेदाज स्कूल्स हैव सर्वाइव्ड सो वी हैव टू रिमेंबर ओनली दो सर्वाइविंग स्कूल्स ऑफ द रिग वेद और द वेदिक इंटरप्रिटेशन ओके सो फॉर द रिग वेद राइट डाउन गिव द हेडिंग रिसेंशन स्कूल ऑफ वेदास ठीक है रिसेंशन ऑब्लिक स्कूल ऑफ वेदास सो फॉर द रिग वेद वी हैव ओनली वन स्कूल विच सर्वाइव इन द प्रेजेंट टाइम फॉर रिग वेद ओनली वन दैट इज द शकल स्कूल शकाला और द शकल स्कूल एंड हेयर यू राइट डाउन शाखा okay this is for rigved okay samved we have three for samved we have three kathuma samved we have three is it visible okay kathuma jaminya written jaminya and the third one is rana yaniya rana yaniya this is for the samved yajurved it has two which what we are talking about is only which is, which is surviving in the present time there are you know many schools are there but we study only the surviving so yajurved has to krishna shakha and the shukla shakha krishna shakha the shukla shakha sometimes krishna is also referred to as the black okay black black school or the black branch shukla sometimes it is referred to as the white okay last atharvaved again we have two recension or two branches so first we have the shaunaka okay shaunaka we have and the second one is the paipalada now why i am going into this detail because if you go through the pattern of the upsc question paper many a time sometimes out of box questions are there which are not covered in your usual sources okay so for example upsc can ask a question or a frame a question in this manner that with reference to the cultural history of india kothiyama jaminya and rana naniya is part of which of the following text a b c d rigved samved yajurved atharved okay so remember all these things इतना अगर आपने पढ़ लिया है यू आर वेरी मच क्लियर अबाउट योर वेदिक लिटरेचर और इससे बाहर आपको कुछ पूछा भी नहीं जाएगा 
until and unless you are a history optional student. Is there anyone history optional? You are taking history optional. Okay, you three. And where from where are you preparing? सेल्फ स्टडी हो जाएगा हिस्ट्री बैकग्राउंड है आपका ओके एंड यू ओके लेवल अप कैन यू सेल्फ स्टडी तो आप आप सभी का हिस्ट्री बैकग्राउंड है कि या किसी और से कहीं से है ओके ग्रेजुएट इन हिस्ट्री फ्रॉम वेयर विच कॉलेज ओके माता एंड बोथ ऑफ यू आर हैविंग आल्सो बैकग्राउंड ओके ओके बट इफ यू आर प्रिपेयरिंग ऑन योर ओन आई विल गिव यू वन पीस ऑफ एडवाइस फॉर अदर ऑप्शनल अपने आप को अकेला मत समझ लेना उनको बता रहा हूँ तो वो आपके लिए भी एलिजिबल है कि ऑलवेज गो फॉर एटलीस्ट अ टेस्ट बिकॉज द वे वी राइट डाउन द आंसर इन आवर स्कूल एंड द ग्रेजुएशन टाइम दैट विल बी वेरी मच डिफरेंट वॉट वी राइट इन द यू Basically, we have to quote the historians when we are writing down the answer. चाहे वो time का debate हो या economic theory के decline का debate हो we have to quote the historians, but we have to be cautious. We have to learn क्योंकि उसका एक word limit है Graduation में जब हम लिख रहे थे तो वहाँ तो सात आठ पेज लिख दो या दस पेज लिख दो जितना पेज लिखते जाओगे उतना अच्छा आंसर मार्क्स मिलेगा बट हेयर देर इज अ क्राइटेरिया ऑफ वर्ड लिमिट सो लर्न द आर्ट ऑफ राइटिंग डाउन द आंसर विथ रेस्पेक्ट टू यू पी एस सी ठीक है इस चीज का ध्यान रखना है एंड इवन आई थिंक अगर हिस्ट्री ऑप्शनल भी अगर आप लोग पढ़ रहे हैं तो इट इज वेरी मच क्लियर इतना आप लोग को आना चाहिए इससे बाहर कुछ रहेगा भी नहीं ओके एंड व्हाट आर योर सोर्सेज फ्रॉम वेयर यू आर प्रिपेयरिंग एंशियंट इंडिया उपेंद्र सिंह मिडीवल मिडीवल शेखर बंदोपाध्याय कहां से आ गया या सतीश चंद्र ओके okay. और मॉडर्न इंडिया शेखर बंदोपाध्याय से ठीक है बट सिर्फ टेस्ट देते रहना और टेस्ट के लिए प्रिपेयर करते रहना एंड इफ यू नीड एनी काइंड ऑफ हेल्प यू कैन आस्क मी ओके नाउ कमिंग टू वेदांग सो फर्स्ट पार्ट वी हैव डन द क्लासिफिकेशन ऑफ द वेदिक लिटरेचर नाउ वी आर कमिंग टू वेदांग राइट डाउन वॉट आर वेदांग और वॉट इज वेदांग a number of a number of supplementary text supplementary text which helps which helps in the proper recitation in the proper recitation use use an understanding use an understanding of the vedas okay so these are the supplementary text which help how veda should be read what should be what should be the way of recitation and the understanding of veda and they have six parts there are six texts are there okay first first text shiksha shiksha that is phonetics phonetics second is chand often referred to as the meter basically it means what ek line mein kitne ya agar hum baat kare so what should be the count of words in a single line ki ek mantra mein kitne words hone chahiye fir dusre word mein kitna hona chahiye teesre word mein kitna hona chahiye so all these things are determined in this way okay then we have vyakaran
grammar fourth is nirukt etymology origin of the words har ek word ka origin kahan se hota hai what does they refer to in what context it should be used okay that is the thing fifth ritual kalp okay and the sixth is jyotish astronomy okay so whenever you get a vedang literature its component will be these six part any vedang literature when you get it will it will must have this six part it will deal with this six things okay and it's one of the famous example write it down yaksh nirukt yaksh nirukt yaksh nirukt a work a work on on etymology of words etymology of words in the rigved etymology of words in the rigved okay everything is clear about the vedic literature ek bar piche jao aur dekho ki kahin koi doubt to nahi hai sir chanda aur shiksha mein kya antar hai chanda that that is chand that is pronounced oh. as chand meter is sir kya difference hai sir chanda aur shiksha mein basically this is about the sound phonetics it is about the sound meter the length what number of words will be there shall or what will be the number of word in a line agar ek mantra agar humne likha hua hai ek pura mantra likha hai to usme kitne lines honge kitne words honge okay 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 phonetics that is chand remember this and shiksha that is phonetics is it clear anyone else hmm. okay see basically we have two words pre classical sanskrit and then we have the classical sanskrit see for example if you take the work of kalidas you know kalidas amukt malyada abhijan shakuntalam so all these texts are written in sanskrit and ved is also written in sanskrit clear abhijan shakuntalam is also written in sanskrit or the work of kalidas is also written in sanskrit ved is also written in sanskrit now if we take ved and that text and when we read it we will find that the sanskrit is very much different in both the text now we have there is a question how is it possible the thing is the classical sanskrit has its has its origin from the work of panini astadhyayi okay here in this book he codified see language would have existed earlier but with time 
and with process changes occur so sometimes the scholar devise what they devise rule as the intellectual tradition goes you devise rule that how if you are writing down any paragraph if you are writing down any any poet poetic work how it should be written what shall be the way agar aap koi sentence likh rahe hain if you are writing down a sentence where the the should be used where you you have three articles a and the on what context you should use the on what context you should uh, on what context you should use an so all these things are discussed here now when we read this rule we find that this rule apply only to classical text classical sanskrit text which are after panini time not before to that so that is why we refer to ved something as a pre classical sanskrit whatever the other text are there which we study that are referred to as the classical sanskrit why because whatever the rules and the regulation and the method method in which they have written they follow the grammatical standard of panini's astadhyay that is why it is referred to as classical sanskrit and pre classical sanskrit you can also say that they don't adhere to the rules the vedas don't adhere to the rules and the standard of the panini's astadhyay that is why it is pre pre classical sanskrit okay and now why do we use word classical because it is one of the classical languages of india sanskrit is there malayalam is there telugu is there odia is there okay that is the region yes you had one question jyotish astronomy khagol shastra yes anyone else having any question no questions now we have studied this text we have studied the entire classification whatever the content of this vedic literature we are there now what is the relevance why do we study it what is the use of that any idea after this why do we study this so basically the objective is to understand the historical relevance of this text how this text help you to understand indian history sources when we had started sources what was our objective to reconstruct ancient history ancient indian history so when we have studied this much classification then what is the general thing which you derive from all these text that is something and this is the part which you should prepare for your mains examination this is what the relevance of the vedic text the upsc can ask a question in the mains okay write down the relevance of this the historical significance of vedic literature historical significance of vedic literature these text comprise these text comprise of religious literature religious literature and and throw light and throw light on certain on certain possible possible historical events historical events now write down the example of this book 7 how many book we had in the rigveda 10 mandalas okay so we have 10 book so the book 7 of the rig ved samhita book 7 of the rig ved samhita refers to a battle of 10 kings 
refers to a battle of ten, 10 kings. So now I want to ask you that what kind of information is coming out from this? If I have to, one has to categorize it. History honors wale student wale batai. You have one example, okay, where there is information related to battle. So how you, will you generalize and categorize it? Batao. Yes. That is Das Rajan War. You have translated it in Hindi. Translation kar I am not asking the Hindi translation. What is the relevance? What kind of history, historical you know, understanding we get this from this? Hmm? So basically, we get an example of political history of that time period. The battle of ten kings ke baare mein bata raha hai. So it gives an example of political history. Us time ke ab ten kings ke baare mein bata raha hai. We have ten kings. So ten kings are belonging to ten kingdoms, ten state or ten principalities. Then if we have 10 principalities, then their name is also there. If the name is there, then they would have certain geographical areas where their empire or state would be located. So in that way, we get the geographical history also. So in that way, the example of this Rig Veda helps us to reconstruct the political and the geographical history of that time period. This you should write. Okay, remember this. After a full stop, write down. They form, they form an important part of, they form an important part of Brahmanical tradition, Brahmanical tradition. Give dash, give dash, text preserves, text preserved and transmitted by a section of Brahmana males. So this is what, this is what, how you will generalize this? that this text has represent the ideas of the Brahmana males preserved in general. Tell me, social history, men, women, caste, all these are part of social history. So it help us to reconstruct the social history of that time period. Okay. It reflects it reflects their religious beliefs and practices and their point of view and their point of view. So how do we summarize this? How do we summarize this? Batao, believe, practices, their point of view, the cultural history, the cultural history of that time period. Okay. So if you get a question like this in the examination, where they are asking you to assess the nature of the Vedic literature or, you know, <coughs> Discuss and describe the characteristic features of the Vedic literature. First of all, start with the introduction of the Vedic literature. I have given that. Then in the body part, you discuss the features, how they are divided. Classification of Vedic literature. Ekdam. Vedas, Vedang, how many parts are there? How many parts are there in the Vedang? Then the main demand is the significance. 
So political relevance, you give the example book 7 of the Rig Veda of the Battle 10 Kings. Geographical relevance, write down. Social relevance, write down one line. Cultural relevance, write down one line. In this way, your answer is complete. Okay. And lastly, as a source of history, as a source of history, these texts, these texts are used, are used for information, for information about life and people, about life and people in parts of in parts of northwestern and northern india in northwestern india yes north and northwestern india during second during second and first millennium and first millennium BCE before common era okay. now whenever you are writing down your answer if you have one point or at least one line is there where you can show the limitation of anything that is the you know that will give you additional half or a one marks more now what could be the limitation of this Vedic literature? What could be the limitation? Any idea? Abhita Kagar? It's a religious text. So how that can be, you know, limitation? If it is a religious text, it is helping us to understand the cultural history of that time period. How it can be a limitation? When it is a cultural text, it helps us to understand the beliefs, idea, thought, all this information is coming about. So, how it is a limitation? Sir, there was no written evidence. Hmm? There was no written evidence. It was only theory and then we write in that drop. But at a later point of time, these were codified. At a later point of time, these were codified. So, through that, because only when it was codified, then we are able to understand that, you know, how many hymns are there in the Rig Vedas for which deities those hymns are mentioned. So what is the limitation? Limited, geographical limitation. Okay. Might not be free of biasness or glorification or exaggeration it plays in. So we cannot take it as a proper historical text. Because it, see, one of the greatest thing or one of the problem in the Vedic literature is related to dating the Vedic literature. The time period, the dating. Because these texts don't mention any time period. They simply refer to as or what we understand is that if we say that at some, suppose you have one text in which it is written that on 15th of June 2023 at a place called Karol Bagh in one of the building a person named Anish Kumar Singh was taking a class of certain student of history who were preparing for the examination of UPSC civil services. So the information is very much clear. Now when you read this Vedic literature the general idea which comes about at some point of time there were some persons to whom the God revealed some kind of sacred knowledge and it is for those persons and all those society to rever and understand them. You should not question all those people because they are the sacred ones. So when you read this kind of line, there are some, you know, blurred picture is there because you cannot identify who is the person, what is the time period, where it is happening. It is at a later point of time that we come to know that this 
and there is always a probability. When you read historians, they will write, might would have been written in this part, might give the information about this. So one of the limitations or the problem which is associated with the Vedic literature is the problem of dating this religious traditions or this because when for the first time this text would have been written that is a debate that is the concern the text is saying that it should not be written but it should pass from one generation to another a verbal oral tradition Vedas are what oral tradition so you don't write it when you don't write it it is not possible to trace the development so this is one of the limitations related to Vedic literature. In that way, you can conclude your answer. Okay, remember this. Okay. Yes. So for today class, I will be stopping at this point only. Upcoming classes, we will be, you know, going with much more speed. Pahla class tha, isli I was going with a slow pace because we have a long history to cover. The speed will also increase and the number of topics will also increase. Now, till this time, any kind of problem, any kind of thing which bothers you, whatever we have taught, any kind of communication issue, you can come out okay, with your question. With respect to what I have taught today or any other general query related to your preparation, anything else. Online Sir? Yes. Uh, sir, just have a um, two hours of last time day, so hmm. uh, topic news the parent of the other week, has a written, I had a written, I put up my preparation. You start reading the class six NCRT. Start from class six NCRT. As we are dealing with the class, you know, ancient history, start reading those chapters. Okay? First of all, complete your class 6 NCRT. You will, we will get a momentum. And when you have completed, then again you can ask that what to read and how, from where we shall start. Okay? Okay, sir. Okay. Yes. Maybe. Yes. Anyone else having any other question? History honors walo ko koi dikkat? So, ghar jana hai, you have to go home, revise this thing, make a habit to revise the thing and go through the previous year question paper of the UPSC, okay? Always have a previous year, there are many publications are there, you can take any one, okay? Go through the previous year question paper of the UPSC and try to find out that whatever the topic we are completing, whether a question which is related to that particular topic you are able to attempt it or not okay make this habit and in the same way go for the mains question today is the first class so i have not given any mains question also may it happen that even in the class also i will start giving you question and i will ask you to write down the answers here only so this exercise we are going to do i am not going to leave it to your head Okay, we are not going to follow that method. So be prepared for it for your answer writing session also in this class. And 10 minutes time will only be given. I am merciful towards you because in the UPSC you will get 6 to 7 minutes. So I am 3 minutes, I am giving you 3 minutes more. Okay. Yes, anything else? Any other question? No? Koi question nahi hai? Online students? Any other question? Okay, everything is clear. Okay. Okay, so we end this class. Okay. And all of you are beginning or you have done some foundation somewhere else or you are in the stages of preparation or first time journey first time you okay you
सेल्फ स्टडी फाउंडेशन यस अच्छा एनी वन एल्स हैविंग एनी काइंड ऑफ एक्सपीरियंस इन अटेम्प्ट एनी वन हेयर हुज गिवन यू पी एस सी एग्जामिनेशन टिल नाउ ओके वन अटैम्प्ट यू हैव यू हैव ऑल्सो गिवन यू वन अटैम्प्ट यू हैव ऑल्सो गिवन ओके बैक साइड फर्स्ट टाइम यू फर्स्ट टाइम फर्स्ट यू आर ऑल्सो फर्स्ट ओके सो इट विल बी नाइस दैट वी वी एट लीस्ट यू आर ऑल ऑन द सेम स्टेज बिकॉज वेन डिफरेंट डिफरेंट ग्रुप आर देयर देन इट बिकम्स वेरी मच डिफिकल्ट टू टीच ओके ओके सो ऑल द बेस्ट and we will keep meeting in the class monday to thursday you will have polity thursday to saturday or thursday to friday thursday to saturday you are having history classes okay yes and also i will say that uh, do look for our takkar program okay it is an integrated year long test series and basically you know it is one of our best of the best test series with respect to prelims and with mains also it is conduct you are given mentorship also every week your syllabus you are given the time to read and then you are evaluated with respect to your pt also and with respect to mains examination also so you should be utilizing this or developing this ability to all you know evaluate yourself what i always see in the candidate is that they you know they do they read mehnat karne se wo darte nahi hai but the point is that lack of strategy and where is the lack of strategy that you keep postponing the thing chalo koi nahi baad mein kar lenge baad mein kar lenge i will do it at next time next time and that next time it comes to january and feb and the moment when you realize ki now it's the time to cope up तब सिलेबस इतना ज्यादा द सिलेबस गेट सो मच पाइल्ड अप दैट यू आर नॉट एबल टू डू इट सो डेवलप अ मोमेंटम टू रीड फ्रॉम टुडे ऑनवर्ड्स ओनली एंड टू इवेल्यूएट यू ओके ओके सो आई एंड द क्लास वी विल मीट टुमारो ओके इन टुमारो क्लास आई विल बी टेपिंग टेकिंग अदर संस्कृत टेक्स्ट लाइक द एपिक्स धर्मशास्त्र पुराणास एंड देन वी विल मूव टूवर्ड्स द बुद्धिस्ट लिटरेचर जैन लिटरेचर going up to the sangam literature okay